Welcome, North America, anybody from EU, everywhere around the world, to the Season 5 North America Draw Show. Um, I am Judah Chop, your host for the night, and um, to my left, you will see NyQuil. And, Yo. Um, so say hi, NyQuil. Hello there. My name is NyQuil. Global greetings to everybody, all fans of Here's Lounge from everywhere. Welcome to the stream. It's the Draw Show. Judo, how hyped are you for the Draw Show? Dude, I've been waiting for this all season. This is like my favorite day of the year. Or is, Dude, or, or I've like been waiting for year. all season. <laughs> I've been waiting for all season, too. You've been compiling clips and clips and clips and clips. Dude, clips have been compiled. This is extremely great. We've got yeah. a great show, folks. Interviewing some of the best of each of the uh, divisions. We're going to do all of the placements for playoffs for the group stage it's going to be great judo yep um and with that i say what do you say we go on to the uh little montage we have uh prepared for you for you guys judo i would love to go to the montage let's do it all right let's do it everybody needs a montage Let's see what they're able to do here on the side of the Careless Badgers. Face melt, knocking them around. Kyberry's trying to go for the channel. There's going to be some chains, a lot of damage out as well. D -E -E, uh, Garrosh is getting low. I'm sorry, ETC, everyone was there. ETC trying to go for the counter channel. They're going to be interrupted by Fishing Queen. That's Lucio who did get picked off. Slice, so very low. Chains pull in the Garrosh. They try and find an auto on the Slice, but they don't get it. They're trying now to get this, but there's the Hyperion, which is infinitely delaying this out, and Kyberry just keeps going for the channel. It's 0.8 seconds. There's in the interrupt from the Hyperion. They weren't able to get to the left-hand side far enough, and that will be the third objective going over to the left-hand side. They they were not able to interrupt in time. XPC in the only because this camp's not been taken yet. Now we're gonna be decently. Now, Stag has got the 9% and we have two tubs coming down from that blue team. We are taking a lot of damage, but actually managed to jump away. But there's the first of all. A huge side in from EDC and Stag trying to run away. Gets the blind on, but will fall in the end. Also EDC falling on there. So Currently one for one and a half at the moment, Ghost Dragon running away. Butte Holiday being chased by Spider Swat over to a healing end. Will be able to amp it up in time. Cactus Ham trying to make a run for his own now, but Bio's kill switch comes out. Yurel and Tasta sold so much. Tasta falls, but Yurel manages to walk it out, and that was quite a finish. <laughs> We're going to go for the race right now, and like we've been talking about this whole time, they don't have much of it. It's taken them quite a while. They do find the swap on the Cho Mix though. Oh my God, the teleport out, it's not enough. Stay well and listen. Locks down multiple members of Nubrak the Beetle is the next to fall. Icky just standing in place, holding his ground with the uh, Cursed Strikes, but unable to continue swiping when that Immortal Sun gets him in the end. General Tao, the next to fall, the protected on Vend. Four members go down. Ghost Dragon taking a lot of damage on the side, but still also gets in by Jensen's mate, but the plant is good, but the Dark Bomb comes out, and Zetra Hitler keeps up alive for the time being. Ten minutes, a lot of damage. There's the Ice Wall! Flip Sector's down, the Blizzard is good! Another one falls, another one falls, and Andalin goes down, another kill. Tychus! Oh, the Lightning Fury barely wide, almost an ace for the Red Team. We're gonna go to this turret right away, which does get them XP, but less than the wave. Rain, oh, they're going for the combo. They only land the APOC though, and a big Durance. A huge Durance locks them all down. Blaze the, with the com the bunker to help them stay alive, but that's Veggies going down. Four members wiped, holy crap, that combo. It's the baby, now split from the rest of the team, and then you take a bit of damage. Flesh Shield goes out, but not gonna find anything. Sound Barrier is good, and the Sanji goes in better. Imperius finds two! JP is done for at the start of the fight. Nano boost doesn't matter. Then you're making a run for a damage out of mana mode. And Pyrrhus finds another one, gets the Ana. Lucio and John are falling though. Poison over against the remaining members really low. And Pyrrhus finds it again, gets another one. Slash is doing so much against a quad kill. 49% and climbing. Oh, nice combo on to Rain. They find the bullet. That's the turret going down. Not even dropped in time. Rain also getting pressured really hard. Johanna's the next hard to go. Beautiful focus fire from the red team. They take out two kills despite being down on the items going into this objective. Oh, ETC actually getting very low over here. Perhaps 
Looks like the red team did pop the Bloodlust. They're looking for Shadow, but a nice teleport over with the Illusionist. Look at this swap into the Mosh Pit from Gondo. They find the kill on Grayman. They're looking for Sonya. That's two. Resets for Lee Ming. They're looking for Wipeout. That's a third. Muffin with the Shadow Walk making their way downtown. Driving fast, homebound, but Tastar is going down. And 1KO trying to be the sole survivor. It looks like they will. Armor not lasting for too long. Coffee with the jump over the wall. Stay a while with on to two, three members actually. Moshpit does get interrupted with the quick melee range dragon arrow. Shadow trying to turn things around with a quick Archon. The autos coming through. Looking for Nico, trying to burn the cow, but the cow stays alive. Sushin goes in for the peel with a burrow charge, but gonna have to sacrifice himself for it. It's not even clear if Shadow gets out. Oh, the lightning Nova finds the kill. Muffin going for more, looking for coffee. You won't find coffee, but two kills is very nice. But it looks like the members of Titanus are just choosing to wait out that clone instead of take the fight. Wandy Woman gets time trapped yet again into a whoop. Oh god, the cow is getting locked down. Big blessed shield onto three members of the light bomb. Follow up Nandy Room and going down. Actually, not quite. Nandy Room is the only one to live, it looks like. Deckard Kane going down. Sonya now in the middle of the enemy team after that leap's been used. And Sonya goes down. They respect the elderly. Oh, they're going for the play. Light bomb looking for Sonya. Just stun locked out of leap for now. Oh my gosh, but the shields and they stay alive. Only ball lightning committed. Three ultimates for the red team. Tempora loop on the ETC. They're looking for the blow onto the cow when they get it, but leap onto two members. Ronda Newman in there. Oh no. They don't find any of them. Cassie going in for the fend. Deckard Kane goes down. It's Cassie versus the world, and the world decided to win this time. I think the clips are over. Oh. Yep. Okay. All right. I'll shut up. <laughs> I hope you guys uh, all enjoyed those clips. They Dude, were... I love the clips where Coffee's just going ham and gets so excited about the plays. Those are some of my favorites from that that little montage. Dude, Coffee is he's giving Caldor a little uh, a run for his money. He's channeling going for? his inner Caldor. Yeah. Channeling yeah. his inner Caldor. There you go. But uh, we we got a guest. We have a guest here. Um, she's not present, and and uh, there's no like. Uh, I think I'm the only video person today. But this whole show, yeah, yeah I think you're right. Everybody provided images, but um, Sadie has some words. She is uh, um, the the league manager for NA. Yes. And, so she's uh, going to talk about playoffs rules, uh, everything about that. Uh, welcome, Sadie. Yeah. Hey, I hope everybody's fine. So um, I wanted to say hi. First, um, congratulations to all the team uh, for playing in Euros Lounge season, season five. It was an amazing uh, season. Uh, I think the teams had a lot of fun. The competition was there. And uh, like a lot of the teams made it through all the season, which is really, really nice. And uh, also congratulations to the one that are moving to uh, the group stage. Um, I was here to talk a little bit about how the playoff works. Uh, There's some new teams that I don't really know, so I'm going to do a quick wrap up of that. So basically, um, eight, te eight teams of each division are moving on to the group stage now. So it's uh, top eight of each division. Um, the, the group stage is um, um, a part where you need to play all the other teams in your group. So tonight, we will uh, draw some groups uh, with the remaining teams. So basically, uh, Epic Cup will have four groups of four. Leg uh, Legendary and Mythic will have two groups of four. And those teams will need to play all each other to determine which uh, teams will go to the bracket day, which is the final day. Um, and the best teams of each group will move to those bracket day. So basically, we will draw those teams tonight. And after that, in the following weeks, so you have like, uh, if you're in the Epic Cup, you have like uh, from the 7th of se September, which is tomorrow, to the 2nd of October to play those matches against the other teams. And if you're in the Legendary or uh, the Mythic Cup, you have until uh, from tomorrow to the 8th of October. So after those, we will uh, make uh, for the Epic group, uh, the two best teams of the four group of four will move to the final day. 
And uh, for the legendary and the mythic, it's uh, the three best teams of the true groups of four. So um, the final day will be, uh, for the Epic Cup, it's going to be the 4th of October. For the Legendary Cup, we're going to be on the 10th of the October. And Mythic, the 11th of October. Um, so that's pretty what I wanted to say about the playoffs. Uh, I wanted to thank all the team for participating to uh, Season 5. Uh, that's all because of you guys that it was a huge success. Also, I have an announcement to do. I'm pretty excited to tell you guys that we are moving on with a season six. And uh, we, just, we just updated the dates on the schedule page on the website. So you can find all the dates of this season six. And we're going to open up the signups for season six right now. So if you, you, you don't want to miss that. So you want to sign up and continue this uh, tournament with us. Um, at this point, I wish you all a good watch of the draw show. I hope you're going to see like a lot of plays and uh, a lot of good memories of uh, this season. And I wish you guys a uh, good playoffs also. All right. Well, that, yeah, that was very uh, professional, long-winded. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, Zadie, you... you I don't know if it's no professionalism. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was great. Uh, no, thank you so much, Zadie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand you have, um, you know, uh, you're busy and you, you took time out of your IRL to, to do this, and uh, thank you for that. It's always a pleasure to work uh, for this tournament. Um, I'm going to say to everyone a good watch. I'm going to also go watch the draw show. <laughs> so thank you for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure. Cool. <laughs> All right. So All right. now coming up, we have our first... Uh, we're, we're heading on to the here. Epic Cup section of the stream, right? We've got Division yeah. 3 and 4 represented first. Yeah. And, we, and I believe we have another guest coming up very soon, right? Yes, we have. It's going to be Ice of Hello Kitty Action Squad. Oh, uh, I failed to label him. Let me. Oh, no, Judo. Let me, let me add a text right here real quick. The one thing I forgot to do. All right, we're just going to move forward. But you're all going to know we're talking to Ice. Guys, the text might not be right, but I promise. We have Ice from Hell Kitty Action Squad. Number one team in regular season play for Division 4, uh, for Season 5. Uh, and we're currently trying to get into a Discord call with him. Judo, you want to hop over to there? Yep. All right. Meet you on the other side, brother. Yep. Hello there. Hey. Hey guys. Welcome, Ice. Yo. How you guys doing? We're doing pretty okay, Ice. How about yourself? Doing good. Doing good. Loving the draw show so far. Hell yeah. Um, I wanted to start off the interview with a question of my own. So sure. you've had a pretty dominant season in Division Four. Uh, at the time I wrote the question, uh, only dropped like two maps in the entire season, which is insane. Uh, but the Epic Cup combines both divisions three and four. So the, the level of competition is about these, it's about to be stepped up for you guys, basically. Uh, how do you think yeah. the action squad is going to be able to compete against stronger opponents from division three? Uh, I mean, it's not going to be easy. That's for sure. Um, we've, we've been able to watch some of those players play on your stream that they're, they're pretty good. Um, we're definitely going to have to step it up, but we, we definitely like playing, you know, the, the next challenge. Um, we like, we like challenging ourselves. Uh, I think from the two games that we played or the series that we played so far, uh, when we dropped our maps, we were like, okay, you know, we could, have we could have thrown on the towel and been like, well, this, this, sucks. <laughs> but you know, we responded pre pretty well in both those, uh, losses. And, uh, I think that shows the strength of our team. So we're, we're, we're excited. Uh, we've been doing our homework a little bit, trying to get ready for these teams. Um, 
it's it's going to be a pretty good fight, and uh, we're we're definitely looking forward to playing these Div three teams. Hell yeah! That that point you brought up is super important. Being able to like bounce back from dropping one map, um, and it's it's super likely that's going to be relevant in your group stage here coming up. Uh, other question I had for you guys was. In particular, your team has a 9-0 and record on Deckard Kane. I think Astarador is the player. What <laughs> makes that hero such a priority for you guys? And how is he able to get so much work done with the old man? Uh, it, oh, we always joke that Ist role plays Deckard, uh, no matter if he's <laughs> playing the hero or not. Like that's, that's just Ist in a nutshell. He is Deckard Kane. But no, the I think I talked about this in our first interview, our first series, we, we really like Deckard um, because he provides a lot of both engage and disengage potential, which is something that we, you know, he, we, we play it aggressively or we can play it very passively and look for a better fight um, with, with a disengage. So um, I think Ist has found himself to be very confident on that champion. He's got other champions that he can play, but he's like, if it's working for me and they're going to give it to me, I'm going to take it. Um, and so and I think he's shown that he, he does very well and has a strong uh, showing with, with Deckard. And then we're able to, you know, build our comp around that, that Deckard play to, you know, chain off of uh, the crowd control that Deckard is able to provide to snowball a fight in our favor or to just get out and, you know, look for, for a fight another day kind of deal. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think he, he does well with that champion. Um, it, it hurt not having him these last two weeks of our season, but uh, he, he's back and he's ready to, ready to go again. Well said. Judo, I hear you got some questions of your own. <clears throat> um, yeah, so uh, you were here for the inaugural season, like season one, and your team didn't have much... Uh, success. Um, yeah, I think you went three and seven. Um, we haven't seen you since then. So, what brought you back to Heroes Lounge? Anything in particular? Uh, no, it was actually really funny. We were we were kind of just talking one day in Discord. We were playing uh, another game. I can't remember what it was, and. Uh, one of the one of the guys, I think actually it was Ist, was like, "Man, I miss playing heroes." Just kind of out of the blue, and we were like, "Oh yeah, we haven't looked at that in a while." And I'll like, "Hey, want to hear so why not the heroes lounge?" Because I still had the Discord open, and like as we were talking, I think uh, Sadie posted like last minute calls for signups for you know season five. So I was like, "Well, guys." last minute call you guys want to try it out and they're like sure why not so we just signed up uh got back into the game i think two weeks before did five start our season five started and uh uh we just you know went with it and see what we could do uh we played a lot of league in between that season one and season five and, uh we, so we were still in the moba scene we were off and on but uh yeah. we just got back into heroes had to kind of learn the meta again figure out what was going on and then once we found out uh, how to, you know, build our comps, what was strong, what wasn't very strong, we just kind of found our own little niche and went with it, and it worked out pretty well. Okay, so you, you had the mechanics, you just had to figure out, you know, what was the meta. Yeah, uh, a lot of us have played, I, I, this whole group of ours, I think, has played games together for over a decade, probably 12, 13 years i think for some of us and so That's we, we've amazing. played games together we know how each other plays certain roles in certain games and so that definitely helped um it was just kind of relearning the champions again and and such i mean i i know myself i'm trying to um, build a community and it's tough um you know i i have i have a couple you know lifelong friends that i've met but Sometimes you, uh, they, they can't always commit to the season and whatnot. But yeah, ha having a community for that long, uh, shout out to that. And um, yeah. I have one more it's question. Good group, good, good group of guys and gals. I have one more question for you. Um, are you worried about any of the Div 4 teams going into the Epic Cup since you already dominated it? The division, do you have your sights set on Div 3? 
I mean, for sure, we have our sights set on Div 3, but we know we still have to play Div 4, and those, you know, all the Div 4 teams are pretty solid. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. We, we, Core Bouncers took us to a very close series, so, you know, we're looking at them as, as attention that to be wary of. You know, we got to really step up our game against them. Uh, we just played Council of Mages, uh, and they're they're potentially going to be another map. So they've already played against us once. That I think that's an advantage for both teams. So, you know, things can happen. Teams can learn and adapt, and suddenly come back. And you know, if you two beat them two zero, they learn from it and they come back and they beat you. So um, it can mm -hmm. absolutely happen. We don't want to you know ignore any of that, but you know, we also have to do our diligence and research our Div three opponents and we've been we've been doing that as well because we know we got two Div three teams that we're gonna be playing against as well. So yeah, yeah, I mean those the Div four teams are are pretty strong this season. I know a lot of that's been said and uh in prior interviews and I definitely wanna uh you know I mean, agree with that and it, repeat that. It, it was tough. Um I was uh, you know my team was Div four myself and we had a fifty percent uh, win rate as far as matches, but then it, it it came down to if you have five wins, you were automatically in. But I think it was only one of the four win teams, and there was like a lot of four win teams that you know didn't make it, and only one that made it. So it was it was uh, uh, it's a close season for Scorpius. Yeah, not I mean there there are some other teams that I I thought. Uh, uh, the, the yeah, other, for a lot of teams, those are close to Yeah, but um. Yeah, there were a few teams I thought for sure were getting in, and the uh, you know there's just one map. It was all it was, and so mm -hmm. I think that speaks to the volume you know of the teams that did make it in. That they're, they're going to be a tough opponents to be be playing against. Yeah, never underestimate. Never underestimate. I go for the treat as well. Ice, it's been awesome having you here for the interview. Do you have Absolutely. anything else you want to say? Uh, I'll just give it out. There's a couple of notes. I don't have any time. One, I want to give a shout out to uh, Addie. She is our coach. She is our chief creative officer. She is our team mom. Uh, always provides us with Capri Suns and Orange Slices. She gives pep talk when we lose matches after her pep talks. So I definitely got to give her props and shout outs. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Syntax. He was up that uh, sub for us the last two weeks. We wouldn't be in the position that we were in without him. Uh, we didn't have him to do it. So definitely give a shout out. And I'll give it to you. Thank you so much. Austin Farm. I'm excited to see. Guys, for the rest of the draw. I I think we might have lost some of that in uh, Discord being a little glitchy, but I think we I think we got the gist. And uh, thank you so much. And it's time to to move on to the actual drawing of the dice. You ready for that? Let's do it. Yeah. Um, thanks, yeah. Guys. Nice, thanks for being here. See you. Dude, thank you Ooh, very, thank you very the much. Actual... Um, um, and for anyone who doesn't know or didn't hear me say it earlier, the Epic Cup combines the Division Three and Division Four, um, which leads to these interesting situations. Like, there's often been one Div Four team that goes deep. Easily could be the Hello Kitty squad. Um, it, it, it was a fat team one season even did it and went to the... I think you're right. And went to the finals. I can't remember which, though. I think it was... Yeah, I, I can't remember which either, but, like, you know, uh, the Epic Cup is always... It's always fun to watch. Mm-hmm. 100%. All right, so... Let's uh, switch back over our calls. Yeah, you, yeah, we can switch the Discord. All right, and we're here. Yep. Okay, so are you currently on like the the dice roll screen? Now I am. Hell right. yeah! So, for um. 
this is how we're going to be doing it. I'm going to roll the dice for each team, and NyQuil is going to document the results. After all yep. the dice have been rolled, we will present you with the results. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so give me a team name. Um, we're actually doing it one pool at a time for Division 3 and 4. So the dice roll corresponds to the team name in this case. Huh? <laughs> Do you know we went over this last night? It's like if you right. you can bring up the, the sheet on the screen, like the dice roll is going to correspond to. Um, I, I don't want to mess up with the your, team. I don't want to mess up with your sheets. So if you could just announce okay. the name. Yeah, I'll, I'll announce the name based on the uh, the dice roll you give me. No, it's, that's not how it works. <laughs> Judo. <laughs> um, it, it I don't should, know what to it, tell you. It, 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 it should be the pools, the seed one. Yeah, we're doing one pool one. at a time. So seed one will be placed into whatever group. Okay, I, th I think I see what you're getting at. If you can just give me one minute to fix the... Um, Sorry about that. The table, okay, yeah. Okay, I, I think I understand what you're getting at, and we should be fine. So we do you can just go ahead with it now. Seed 1, Seed 2, Seed 3. Yeah. Okay, so I'm doing Seed 1 right now. Okay, this is Los Popotras' team. And they will be into uh, Group 3. Group C, all right. That's Los Popotras' team. Everybody see that? Visible? I hope. I, I bought these special dice that are, you know, as you can see, the, the D20s are, like, unlegible, but um, on on to the next one. Which, yep, this team? will be Trogol's Angels. All right. That would be a four. Okay, so they're going to Group D. Trogol's Angels, a new team that's had some decent success this time around. Then, really nice uh, inaugural season. And then, um, C3. Okay. That'll be Titanus Revolution. That is... Did we get a, a group three yet? We did. We okay, already got so a group that, C. So that's a double. So we re, we, 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 we re roll. Okay. That's a one. That's a one. So Titanes Revolution will be going to Group A. And Team Artemis, for their second season, are going to be going to Group B this time around. Okay. Next uh, group. All right. This is the group with Probius, Randy Newman, Rainbow Strike Go, and Phoenix Rising Citrine. So Probius will be rolling first. All right. For the little guy, for the probe. For the probe. That's, Shout out to Starcraft. That's a uh, one. That's the one. Probius is headed to group A. And now for the next team. Mm-hmm. Randy Newman. That was a double. That was the uh, a double. So we roll Okay, it. so you got a one again. Reroll it. That is a four. It's a four. Randy Newman are headed to Group D. I tell you what about Randy Newman and uh, Rainbow Straight Go. Both had a like not so good season or not so good off season for last season of Year's Lounge. I feel like they're going to pop off this time. I'm calling it right now. This is the year of Randy Newman. Uh, I I don't know. I think I I think Rainbow Straight Go, dude. They 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 got to. Yeah, I think they're both kind of a good season. We got to roll for them next now, Gino. They get a lot of connections, but here we go for the next round. We're both kind of a good playoff run. It is a uh, two. That's a two. Team Rainbow Strike Go are headed to Group B. And that leaves Phoenix Rising Citrine. They are going to Group C alongside the Popo Chats. All right, that's all our Div 3 teams already placed, and we're heading towards the Division 4 teams now. So next is Hello Kitty Action Squad. Is 
Is that on camera? Yeah, okay. That's a one. That's a one. Hello Kitty Action Squad are headed to group A alongside Titanus Revolution and Probius. Next we're rolling for one more fight. Another super consistent legacy team from Division 4. That would be a three. It's a three. One more fight. Are headed to group C. And then we have... They tend to have really good regular seasons and then fall off in the playoffs as well. I think this might be the year they break through and get some wins in group stage. Hopefully. One more fight definitely deserves, like... I, yeah, uh, I think they deserve so, a good so season, dude. They, they, like, uh... They've got some tough competition to get there. Phoenix Rising Citrine and Popo Chasa are in the way. But I, in group I, C. I would definitely like to see them in the bracket stage. Me too. Right. We're rolling for Phoenix Fledgling next. It's a, uh, three? We already did three, right? Yeah, we already got three. We're rolling for group B or D. Okay, that doesn't work. We got a reroll. Need a two or a four here. We got a four. We got a four finally. Phoenix Fledgling. Shout out to Harkin Giants Spain in the chat. Um, yeah, just made a super successful team this season. It's been cool seeing them uh, just get a new team up and running. Yeah. And that leaves Big Boy Club for Group B. By the way, um, with all that's going on, it's hard for me to keep tabs on chat because. Uh... I have to keep certain windows open. Dude, Judo, it's all good. I'm a man of the people. I can be your go-between, between you and chat. Nice, nice. All right, um, so now we will, you have uh, everything set up? Uh, we got we got pool four left for Division four. Oh, okay, pool four. So we got to roll for Council of Mages now. Two. Much, luck, two. much luck to Council of Mages. I, th I think they two owed us, and uh, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was a pleasure to play with them. <laughs> They're a scary team when they... Rolling with the deck. Bat Lock Ness next. You're cutting out there, but... Okay, here we what? go. Okay, we are rolling for free agent team Lock Ness for the next... Uh, four. Four, so Fat Lock Nest are going to Group D. I think they're the only free agent team in playoffs this season, so shout out to them. Hey, I, I picked out their logo. Hell yeah. yeah shout well, out to Judo Oh, well, no, no, I didn't, no. I'm okay, not shout out to Judo I'm thinking Chow. of Chupacabra. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, ready? We got to roll for the core bouncers, dude. We got a one. Looking for a one or a three. We got, we got a, one? a one. All right. So the core bouncers are headed to group A, and that leaves not today nerds going to group C. All right. So are we going to get the results up on screen? Yep. We got them up on screen. Everybody uh, take a screenshot right. if you need to. Or, um, it's a bit I of mean... a delay for me. Seeing it. There we go. I tell you what, I feel like this season, the spiced group is, I'm calling it Group C. Group C is going to be spiced. They got Citrine, they got Popo Chas, they got one more fight. That's going to be one to look out for. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You got any thoughts, Judo? Um, I, I would say watch out for D. With Phoenix Fledgling, I think they're a really strong team. They have a lot of assets. Oh, for sure. That's, that's also like a really scary group of Div 3 teams there. Chogos Angels and Randy Newman. Yeah, and... That, that's a scary uh, one. Because there's so many Phoenix uh, rising teams, I feel like they, they can maybe use some uh, step-up subs because uh, <laughs> for the Div 4 teams, they, they can use... Uh, subs from the Div 3 level, so... It's true. I do want to clarify real quick, though. Phoenix Fledgling is not part of the Phoenix Rising franchise. That is their... That's just a coincidence. Oh. They got a separate name. 
Oh, my bad on yeah. that. Phoenix Rising Citrine, they are part of that group. Well, okay. Moving on. Um, so... Yeah, so next in the show, I believe we're heading on to the Division 2 segment for the Legendary Cup, or Legendary Championship. Cup. It's a cup. Yes. Um, and we have uh, the interview first, right? Uh, yeah, we do have the interview. Um, so we're going to be having uh, the infamous Wex Anduin on the show in just a moment. All right, let's see if we can get him on the line. All right. We're just swapping. Hello there. Hello. Wex Anduin, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. The infamous. The infamous Wex Anduin. Judo, I think we're going to start off with your questions here, right? Yes. Oh, and we, we didn't really introduce his team. He is of I Like My Bread Boiled, Not Fried. Which I think, are you guys number one or number two in Division Two? Uh, you guys are number one right now. Uh, or is it a tie? One. Um, I'm not super sure how that happened, to be perfectly honest. But we are- <laughs> <laughs> Either way, Wax has had another excellent season. Now promoted into Division Two. Judo, you want to start? Yeah, well, first of all, I want to thank you for returning back to Heroes Lounge for Season 5. It's always nice to see teams coming back, having fun, becoming a legacy within the North America, uh, you know, family. Um, Last season, uh, you also made playoffs. Do you think being more familiar with the format will help you in any way? Sure. So, um... I think that the format was already more or less familiar to us last season. The format of the elimination round was more or less the same that we uh, dealt with in TESPA. And while the group stage was a bit new to us, uh, it was more or less just a continuation of the regular season, I suppose. But so I I suppose that we were already already sort of familiar with both sides. But at the same time, I think that... um, having an event where we play an entire day was new to us. So I feel that having had that under our belt, we'll be able to come in and uh, hopefully be able to handle that uh, very well. Yeah. The, uh, the oh, Brad- sorry to interrupt, Judo. You know, can you update the uh, display on the stream? Oops. That is a typical Judo thing to happen. I would agree. I, I, I would agree. <laughs> So that leads to my last, my next question. Last season, I was struggling to properly format the draft results and labeled your team as BBB. Yeah, and for anyone who doesn't understand, like, I like my bread boiled, not fried. There's only two B's in that name. Um, and you tried to try to shorten the name. It didn't quite work out. Yeah, so. I had an extra B in there. It became quite a meme, even with casters during the season labeling you as BBB. Um, how does it feel to be a meme? It feels great. Um, I think that uh, there's a lot of uh, people we have that sort of came together to create this. First uh, was you, absolutely, uh, Mr. Chop. Can I call you Mr. Chop? Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> So, I think that was definitely a classic judo chop moment, and I think it sort of created a lasting legacy for us. And uh, I'm not sure whether to thank you, but I definitely appreciate it. (laughs) I think that um, NyQuil, on the other hand, definitely sort of perpetuated the meme into infinity, more or less. It was my chat. It wasn't me. It was my chat. My chat controls all. Are you really going to deflect the blame like this, NyQuil? I am. I'm very good at it. Okay, all right. At deflecting. Regardless, uh, NyQuil's chat, apparently, uh, sort of perpetuated the BBB. And then we had uh, a traitor from our own team, uh, Gold Fortune, decided to uh, have our logo altered to have a third B in it and send it to you discreetly. Shout out to Gold. uh, 
yeah, shout out to him for uh, making me look like a fool. <laughs> but yeah, no, no great. Yeah, you, you don't look like a fool at all. I mean, <laughs> you, 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 your team, you know, uh, and and the progress you've had with, you, with your team within Heroes Island shows that all, buddy. Like, you guys are a force to be reckoned with, BBB or not. It's just such they, an odd, they absolutely such are. A, it's such an right odd right. name. I like my bread boiled, not fried, and it's hard to say. And yeah, dude, I, it's a great name. We got some great team names in NA. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, honestly, I like my bread fried, and I make croutons out of them. But <laughs> well, real personally, I like my bread boiled. I make bagels out of it. Yeah. I agree that we do have a lot of great team names. Uh, shout out to Randy Newman. We love you guys. Yeah. Shout out to Randy Newman as well. Judo, if you don't mind, can I take over with the next question? Go for it. All right, I'll do exactly that. Mr. Wex, uh, Bread Boiled, a lot of people might know, not know this. Uh, Bread Boiled's been around for a very long time since the Tespa days. Um, as far as I know, you guys used to have Doobie on the roster way back when, and you only this season just brought him back into the lineup for Heroes Lounge, and you even roll swap people to get him back onto that main tank role, which you used to fill. Uh, how much has this role swapping affected the team dynamic with that change between seasons four and five? Sure. So, um, Doobie was a member of the very first roster that we created. Uh, it was about four years ago now, just a bit over. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're very happy to have him back. Um, after he graduated from school, we had to sort of replace him due to TESPA being a collegiate league. And we've gone through a new, numerous uh, iterations of me either being on tanker support since then. Right. Um, I think that's just sort of uh, been what I do more or less at this point mm -hmm. that I fill in on either of those. Having Doobie back is definitely, I think, uh, really great for the team. As usual, it took me some. It took us some getting used to back to uh, getting the roster uh, changed, and it took a little bit of. Um, getting used to it but right. i think after a couple weeks we sort of got into the groove and we've sort of come into our own and i'm really excited to see uh hopefully having a uh consistent roster for ideally more than one season would be great hell yeah other question i had was um one of your team's signature heroes is of course the medivh it's virtually perma banned against vencer last season's epic cup finals the championship match became this, like, back and forth where whichever team got the Medivh first in the draft seemed to win. Uh, do you think Medivh might be a big power player for playoffs this season, or do you think he's going to remain in permaban territory? So my first instinct is to answer permaban territory. Sure. That's sort of what we've encountered thus far. Um, there are a couple teams in the playoffs that we have not played yet that could secretly have Medivh players on them in which case we would uh, probably go into yet another back and forth mm -hmm. uh, like we did with tentative team name. Right. Um, ideally, we wouldn't have to commit the cardinal sin again of having to ban our own Medivh, but I suppose sometimes uh, we have to do terrible things to win. Um, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, uh, I think that... Uh, if I had to guess, it's probably going to stay permabanned. Um, but if anybody's listening, uh, I, I don't ban it. We don't. We were not even good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't Red Bull, not fight. You, You're not even good. Don't worry about the, the bird. Wex, it's been it's been a really good interview. <laughs> do you have any other shout outs? Anything you want to get out of the way? Um, I do want to say shout out to uh, Gold Fortune's girlfriend, Gina for making our logos and banners. Uh, it's a nice logo, dude. He did a great job. Everyone uh, at home, go to the Division 2 standings, find Bread Blood, look at that logo. It is nice. Uh, I, we're all massive fans of it. She did a great job. I love it. Um, really, just sh uh, honestly, shout out to you, NyQuil. You're pretty shout cool. Shout out to me. We all love you. Shout out to you. I love myself, too. Thank you, Wix. Uh, uh, okay, I take it back, then. <laughs> that, that, that's a bit, uh... All right. Lex, thank you for coming on to the show. Thank I'll you. See you around, buddy. Thank yeah. you, dude. All right. All right, so... dude. You want to move over to the other DM? Yeah, let's do that. All right.
All right. So huh? we are back with um, me, Nyquil, and Chat. So we are going to move on to the dice rolls of the Legendary Cup. Now, oh yeah, I'm a lot more confident. I know, I know how this one's going to work. With this, this is a little different. We're going to do odds and evens. So, yep, and also this one will be a lot quicker just because it's just eight teams now going into two different groups. Yeah, so one and three is odd and two and four is even. A little math. Right. Qu quick maths. Um, and let's get into it. So what team do you have? All right. What team do you have for me? Um, I was told we're rolling first for caffeinated knights. All right. So a one will, like an odd number will put them in group one, an even number will put them in group two. We have an odd. We've got an odds so that'll be caffeinated knights going into pool number one. And conversely, I like my bread boiled, not fried, are going to be going into group two. So let's pull one out of the way. All right. Next, we're rolling for Team Rocket in pool two. I have an even. As an even, Team Rocket will be going to group number two. And on the other side, Careless Badgers are going to be going to group number one. I think that's the team with a bunch of streamers, right? They're doing pretty well this season. I uh, we're now rolling for pool number three, Titans Black. Another three. <laughs> Another three. So that's a that's a group one. Yep. All right. So Titans Black are going to group number one, and amateur opponents are going to be going to group number two. Another odd number. Okay, so that's for pool four? Yeah. Okay, odd means that A of Kings and Queens are going to group one. That's uh, Zadie's team. Shout out to Zadie. And on the other side, Tiny Dancers are going to be going to group number two. Does that mean group one is stacked? That group one is stacked? <laughs> I think you might be right. Well... It was it was the magic of the dice. Don't blame me. It's the um, magic of the dice. Oh wait wait wait. Was the second roll a three? Uh yeah. I believe so. Oh. So you said three is even. Chat chat's pointing out there's a mistake. I think Team Rocket was supposed to group, go to group one. Okay. Okay, so that means Team Rocket's going to Group 1 and Karis Badge are going to Group 2, if chat's correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for calling that on the chat, guys. We got that fixed. So that, that was yeah, all threes yeah. we rolled? Oh, yeah. I said even, and it was an odd. Okay. Okay, yeah. I think we figured that out. So you literally just rolled three or four threes in a row? No, uh, th three threes and a four one. Even. Four odds? Three threes and okay. a one. Okay, so you rolled all odds, which means... All the top here, or all the top teams are going to the left side. All the bottom side teams are going to the right. Do you have that thrown up on on stream now? The uh, the results. Yep. Let's get that up on there. All right. So on the left side, we've got caffeinated knights, team rocket, titans black, and the A of kings and queens. That is a scary group. Uh, and on the other side, we've got. I like my bread boiled, not fried, careless badgers, amateur opponents, and tiny dancers. All right. Yeah, recognizing a lot of names that my own team played against this season. Yeah, this is out of my uh, Heroes Lounge IQ. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a Div 4 player, so... Um, I any, mean... Any an analysis, floor is yours. Sure. I mean, look, caffeinated knights and bread boiled are killing it. Uh, it would be shocking if either of those didn't make it through the bracket. Um, otherwise, I don't know. These are all strong teams. I think they've all got a good shot at moving on. Um, 
And while Group 1, I think, argue looks scarier, I would not count out Group B either. Karis Badgers, Amateur Opponents, Titan Dancers, all, I think, their first season and still performing so well in Division 2. Um, it, it's going to be an exciting year for the Epic Cup, or the sorry, the Legendary Cup. I think that's all I got to say. Yeah. All right. So do you want to move on to our next interview? Yeah, we got one more interview lined up, guys. For the Mythic Cup, we decided to get insight from Third Eye over at the stream. Judo, you want to figure out how to move us over? Yep. Hello? Yes. Insight, welcome to the stream, dude. Thank you, man. How's it going? Doing fine, thanks. Once again, we have another picture. I'm the only one with... Uh, I feel kind of... Um, You're the only one with a yeah. video word, feed? Uh, I feel kind of... Uh, I don't know. At least we get to see Insight's wonderful sunglasses this time yeah. around. So it's a little bit better than the other two, I was I a bit say. disappointed by the other two guys. I was like, come on, <laughs> can we show up some stuff? <laughs> I should have shown some pictures or whatever. Some drawings of myself, too. <laughs> bring out to it's all good. Paint. But, um, and for anyone who's not familiar, I think this is the, the third eye is the number two team in the division this season. Yes. Super impressive. You guys have been around for quite a few seasons. Yes. Uh, Judo, you want to start off the questions? Sure thing. So, um, in Div 1, Third Eye and Press Forward are heavy favorites. You place fourth uh, last Mythic Championship, I believe? Yes. Yep. Um, so, that's an achievement in itself, but uh, do you have anything special lined up? as far as strats for perhaps the championship game? Well, last season it was quite a different team. We had two different players. We lost our captain and we lost our solo laner. So then we had to kind of redo the whole team. But now I think we're, we're getting better. Um, of course, we're playing even more characters right now and we're practicing more combinations of characters to see if we can pull something special. Now we know what our opponents are playing more. So we can kind of adjust and see where we can find a weakness and maybe play more counters of them and get okay. the win, especially against Prince Forward. <laughs> That's good. I, I mean, I would love to see you guys, um, you know, uh, get a better standing than you did last season, which, which, uh, which should be great. Um, yeah. So, uh, I'm sure NyQuil is going to ask you more in-depth. Uh, yeah, we, we both got questions about the, the meta. More you can in, start off. in-depth questions about this topic. But, um, you know, Blizzard implemented a lot of uh, changes this season. Um and I think of all the of all the players, it it has affected the the higher skill players negatively. Do you feel like the game is getting less balanced on the semi pro level? It's a good question. I personally don't feel like it's less balanced. It's always unbalanced and you just always have to adapt yourself, your characters, and deal with the new strategies that are coming in. I don't see any like specific moments where I was like, oh damn, this is very broken or this is very painful for us. I think we're a Chromie right now is a pain point. We're we're playing her now, so we're ready to, to use her if we can <laughs> if she's not nerfed uh well, for the playoffs, she should be fine before the tournament. So yeah, I I don't think it's much different than any other seasons right now. The next the next change is is a big one though. The one on the PTR might change a lot of things. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I was about to ask about. Uh, specifically, yeah. you mentioned Chromu, who's getting that W build nerfed. Um, the PTR in general is taking aim at a lot of the top performers in the meta, like Cassie and Tassadar. It's also giving everyone in the game this long cooldown self cleanse, which is absolutely crazy. Yeah. How do you think the changes are going to impact your strategy and playstyle heading into the Mythic Championship? I think it will impact it a lot. I'm curious to see the characters that kind of rise up with that thing because Chromie is going to fall, I think. 
all these characters that are relying on that easy CC now make it make it nerf by this. So I will be curious. I don't feel like her team comp is really using these characters that much. We've played a couple of like Gul'dan and stuff, and it's not it's not a character that really uh, it's it's basically a long term damage. You know, it's not a, a big burst. So. I don't know. I feel like the characters who are doing the big bursts or relying on CCs are really gonna pay the price. And it's also gonna really increase the gap between the the weak players and the stronger players because now oh, people are gonna use it for no reason sometimes and the strong players are gonna have to use it wisely. So I think in the pro scene it's gonna be very, very interesting. Um, I can't wait to see how it goes. Oh yeah, I totally agree. As like a Garrosh player where <laughs> you can get punished so hard for that cleanse being on cooldown, now every hero in the game has that problem, which is kind of nuts. Yeah, um, I like it. Up. I, I like the fact that they've they've added this a long cooldown. Of course, I'm a WoW player, so I know I know how it feels. I know the the, the feeling that it will create, and I played a lot of League, and I was in love with the flash and the ignite. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm a super super stoked to see that coming in. Cool. Um, we're about to find out who your opponents will be for the group stage. Are there any teams you played this season who you're really looking forward to rematching? Yes, for sure. Well, the two teams that we've lost against, for sure, Press Forward and uh, Regen Retro, we want to play against them if we can. Is, is Regen Retro in? Uh, Regen sure. Retro is not in the top eight, so they are out of playoff contention. They're, out of, they're not going to be in group stage yet. Okay, interesting. Interesting. So, well, Press Forward and uh, the other ones, I'm looking at it right now. I was about to say Yamati, but uh, Yameti, there's a weird name, but they're not in too. Yeah, they're not in it either. Yamete Kudasai. Yeah, so we wanted to play against them. Unfortunately, it couldn't happen, and we wanted to see if we were better than them, but otherwise, uh, it's only press forward left. The rest of the teams are, I don't think we've played against much of them, so I'm just oh. curious to see how it goes. We'll see. Hell yeah. I mean, maybe you could hit up uh, those two teams for scrims to to prep for uh, the, your upcoming group matches. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Cool. You got any other shout outs? Anything else to say and say? Oh, I just want to thank my team for the time that we're taking to to play. I think it's a it's very fun to have a bunch of guys uh, teaming up together and trying to play and have fun, even though it's competitive or just having fun and trying to do our best to win the the championship so i just want to thank every single member of my team and solidity for subbing a couple of times <laughs> he's not part of the team but uh, he saved the rasa a couple of times so i just want to thank him oh yeah thank you for the interview and sales see you around yeah. yes thank you guys bye bye from now we are moving on to the mythic championship dice rolls yeah, are we staying in this Discord and moving over to the other one, or? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move over. Okay. Okay. okay there we go. Right here. Let's uh, sort it out. And <coughs> heading on to dice rolls for the Mythic Championship. This is the Division One teams. Um, and we're starting off with Pool One, which has Press Forward and Third Eye. Those names that kept coming up so much in the interview. Yeah. Let's let's see where the dice fall. All right, for the fir for the first uh, group. Mm-hmm. So we're rolling for press forward. We have an even. That is a we have an even. So that means press forward is going to be going to group number two, and third eye is going to group number one. All right, pool number two is Small Potatoes and Archon. We have a two. We have a two. So Small Potatoes are heading to group number two, and Archon are going to group number one. I tell you what, I don't know that much about Archon. Small Potatoes in last season's Legendary Cup were just absolutely destroying everybody. And to see them also performing so well in Division One. I, I feel like they... Uh, you can't sleep on this team. Yeah, I remember really you you, uh, you mentioning that uh, that to me earlier that like they they were um, 
Um, I actually talked to them uh, about being part of the draw show. At, at first they said yes, but then they couldn't make it, so we'd find a replacement. Right, right. But all right. Either so, way, we got a nice interview from Insight a few yes, minutes ago. So we're heading on to pool number three, which is Baby Makers and Team Ripers. And we have an even. I mean, I mean a three, a three. We we have a three. So a three is going to be odd. That means. <laughs> baby makers are going to group number one. I need to and go back team to, are going to I need to go back to second grade. Second grade, second grade featuring judo chop. Yeah, I I'll be honest. My my hero's lounge IQ. It's not so high in division one, but I know Champa Hoard is playing for Team Ripers. I see him all the time on fan streams. So, a shout out to Champa Hoard. Hope they're doing well over in in division one. All right. And last, we've got, we've got pool number four, which is That's Not the Play versus FKC Gaming. Or rather, those two are, are being rolled for. And that will be a four. So that's, an that's a four. That's even. That means That's Not the Play are going to pool number four. All right. So let's. I tell you what, and that means the FKC are, are going to be going to group number one. One of my favorite moments this season was seeing one of the round one matchups for Division One, where the two teams were on the left side was that's not the play, and the other side was who TF made that call, and it was just it just worked perfectly. <laughs> but that's um, not the play. Who at least one of those teams call. moved on to Div One. Yeah. Uh, I mean, shout that out was the to matchup. You. you. You did a lot of casting this season. I just want to say, yeah. it, 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 if you feel like you want to become a caster, or or you are a caster and want to become um, a part of the community, um, you know, contact one of the mods, and we, uh, we're always looking for more uh, North American casters. Hell yeah. Um, of course, Season 6 not going to be going on for a few months, I guess. But if you want to get involved in casting for, for, for Here's Under any other league, just find me on Discord, talk to me. I can try and help you get set up, let you know how I run things on my channel. Uh, judo. Uh, you did casting in the past, right? Y poorly, yes. <laughs> I mean, judo still understands the OBS. But there, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of people in this community that will like help you out, get you started if oh. you're interested in that kind of thing. Absolutely. I would totally give you an OBS tutorial any day of the week. Just let me know. Hit me up. Yeah, but moving back to the, the Mythic Championship here. Um, I tell you what, Group 2 I think is going to be super spicy. I'm really looking forward to Press Forward versus Small Potatoes more than any other matchup in this group stage. But at the end of the day, I think it's going to come down to Third Eye and Press Forward. I, I see those two going to finals this year. Or the season. Uh, Judo, you got anything, yeah. buddy? Nope. I'm just getting this next slide ready. There we go. Okay. We're ready. We're ready for your stats. Oh, boy. It's my favorite part of the show. All right. Um... I always love just keeping track of stats for all the divisions for my own purposes for casting. Um, I, I sent in stats for last season's draw show, and this time I've got hopefully some interesting tidbits of stuff that's happened this season. So, uh, Judo, are you already moved over to the stats slides? Yes, and as, uh, all right. you, as you were behind the scenes while I was rolling the dice, I will be behind the scenes as you call out the stats. So on oh yeah, to... I might be a little bit delayed because the uh, stream pops up just like maybe ten seconds late for me. But um, the first, do you have it up? Just let me know when you have it up. Okay, I'm gonna put it up right now, and it's up. I see Isaac in the chat is excited about the stats, and he's got good reason to be excited. He's going to see the first slide in a moment now, as Judo Chop gets us ready. There we go. So top average KDA players. For players who played a minimum of 10 maps this season. We've got Istarador, that Deckard Kane player we were mentioning earlier, at 14.92 average KDA. Um, as well as Mundane Zebra and Non-Champion are up there in the top three. 
I believe that's Mundane Zebra of Bread Boiled and non-champion from Bugan Squad. <laughs> um, just absolutely impressive to just be that consistent of a player, have that many high, that high a number of kills and assists and that low death count. Um, we can keep moving on to the next slide where we've got top average KDA teams, which is the same concept applied to the whole team. Uh, a lot of similar names showing up from the rest of this stream. We've got Hell Kitty <laughs> Squad coming at number one, Archon, and I like my bread boiled, not fried, coming in at number two and three here. So just absolutely uh, strong performances this season, very low death count, very high kill count. Uh, moving on to the maps, the most played map this season was Infernal Shrines at 142 games. Least played with Sky Temple at 24. And while I didn't find out which games these were, I know that the shortest game was an 8 minute 45 on Braxis, which is hilarious. And a uh, 3609 on Infernal Shrines was our longest game of the season. Yikes. Absolutely grueling one. That's a big yikes right there. Um, I sorted out most popular heroes for all divisions, where it's, it's pretty much the names you're going to expect to see up here. Johanna, uh, Cassia, Tassadar, ETC, all coming in at those number four, those top four slots. Maybe these recent patches will have an impact on that. The nerfs to Joe, ETC, uh, as well as the other two. Uh, but they still seem to be getting picked quite a lot, even in recent weeks, uh, depending on what division you're looking at. And then as we move on to the highest win rate heroes for each division, uh, and this is set for like the min, has to be a minimum of 10 times the heroes picked for it to show up on this list. For division four, we've got Wiorik, Phoenix, Kira, and Sonya showing up. Sonya tends to be a really high performer in division four every season. Um, I don't know if you can speak to that or not, Judo Chop, but you see a lot of the weep Sonya in Div four just absolutely dominating for some reason. Yeah, um, I don't, uh, as an off laner, I, I'm, I'm over Blaze, less of Sonya, but, um, yeah, Leap just has so much, it's the combo. Div 4 is all about combos, like. It's true, you do see a lot of wombo combo efforts yeah, from the top performing teams that, in Division that, 4. That, that goes right with the Phoenix, right with the Kira, right with the Leora. Yeah, that Phoenix is probably freaking uh, FF and the Pancakes' fault because they just run the laser every single game. I mean, look, uh -oh. look at that combo. Okay, let me let me get it in tune with Leoric. Throw the Phoenix yeah. on there, the Kira, the Sonya. It's absolutely true. If we move on to Division 3, you can see... Uh, a bunch of scattered names here. Chromie, Chen, uh, Kel'Thuzad, and Anna. Uh, I think the most impressive one here, honestly, is Anna, who's shown up in 40 games and winning over two-thirds of them. It's kind of nuts. Uh, that's not just like a fluke. That's like getting played consistently and getting so much wins. I think it speaks to how big of a power player the Nana boost can be. Yeah, and um, Kel'Thuzad as well. Um, whenever I see him, uh, I, I, I get scared. <laughs> with good reason. If we move on to Division 2, you'll see we get Medivh, Alarak, Jaina, and Rhaegar coming in at the top. Um, I'm not sure who else has been running Medivh behind Red, besides Red Boiled, but they are obviously partially at fault here. And the Jaina doing well across 26 games is uh, pretty big as well. Such a consistent yeah. rate at that level of play. For, such, for uh, a hero that was in the game at launch, you know... Yeah, she's super straightforward, Still very simple, meta. just a shotgun burst mage. But she just gets so much value even today. Yeah. And then if we go on to Division 1, we've got some pretty funny results, in my opinion. Uh, the, the top four winning heroes are <laughs> TLV, Falstad, Varian, and Rexar. The TLV winning 80% of, out of 10 games is just absolutely disgusting in my eyes. Who's the Rexar who's... makes sense. If you get Rexar in a good situation, that's like... Yeah, absolutely. He's going to dominate the lane. Absolutely. I think it's the Falstad and the Varian that stick out to me. Like, how is Varian winning that much in Div and 1? how is Falstad winning that much? Like, I guess, like, the Gust is really good, the Global Soak, but, like, like performing that well, like, it's, it's pretty I, big. I, I guess I, it's not I, a huge I, number of games, though. I don't think by himself Falstad is um, the strongest of heroes, but he, he does have some unique abilities that, w with uh, a good team, can... Definitely. Oh, yeah, if you can just, like, get everyone to play around the Gust well, or if you're using Gust to cancel out a, a crucial ultimate ability like a Bloodlust, um, he can just reset the fight or steal a boss or something. He does have a lot of utility, for sure. And he's global. 
He is a global. Uh, that's all we got for the stats. Wanted to keep it as short and sweet as we could this season after dragged on a little bit for the last draw show. Um, what else do we got up for today, Judo? Is that it? Um, that would uh, be it. Um, that's that's all the the slides I have. Um, yep. What else do we have to say? Um, I'm I've not... got a few personal shout-outs if you want me to go ahead. Oh, you go for it, buddy. Oh, dude, I'll go for it, Judo. Uh, Zadie wanted to let me say, um, if anyone has any questions about playoffs, you can start a ticket on the support desk, and a moderator will respond to them. Um, so I believe she needs the support desk chat channel inside the Here's Lunch Discord. If you have any questions about what's going on with the uh, playoffs, that's the source to go to. Uh, other particular person I wanted to shout-out was... Mike Air 22 on Twitch.tv. I know he's here in the chat earlier. I don't know if he stuck around, but let me tell you, we didn't get him in the clip show, but he's one of the most exciting casters I've seen in a long time for this game. He, we've had a large influx of Latin American teams this season, Spanish speaking teams that he's like yeah. providing a space for them. He's doing excellent work. Even if you don't understand the language, go check him out. His yeah. stream is just I, amazing. I love to see South American teams play um, because, uh, I feel like the first couple seasons it was just, you know, uh, U.S. and Canada and a couple started to trickle in and, you know, now we're getting more and that, that's great, like, because, you know, we are North America. Oh, yeah, dude, I love I love the micro streams. Uh, only other thing I want to say was shout out to my own team, uh, Team Tiny, get me through this season. It's been a lot of fun being back on a team. I think that's all I got, Judah. It's been an awesome draw show. Yeah, um, I want to shout out my team. Um, I think you put it best as uh, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, shout out to to KB Strike for being our MVP, and shout out to Adam for being uh, for improving so much this season. Without him doing that, we wouldn't have been able to get those late season wins. And, um, do, do we have the info on when? What, for season six, are you asking? Yeah. I don't have it off the top of my head. I can look at the website right now. But what I can tell you guys at home is that Season 6 signups are going to be open tonight. As far as I know, Zadie's going to get that opened up, and you can sign up for the next season. Dude, I'm already hyped for it. I'm, I am, I'm going to be I've got big ideas. I'm going to try and be the first team to sign up. Oh, crap. Judah's going to beat all of you if you don't get there right now. Here's lounge.gg. Slash, <laughs> okay, I don't know the full URL, but if you can sign up before Judo, I'll give you $5. That's not true. I won't give you, any, I won't give you money. Um... I'm, I'm trying to see if there's... Okay, signups will open tonight. Signups close on October 25th. Seating's going to happen on uh, October 26th. That's actually coming up really soon. Um, and round one will start November 9th this year for season six of NA. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to try and get us into um, a, a, a raise situation. So I want to... Raid, uh, uh, highlight so the, um, one of my close friends, uh, Fox, she did all the design. Yeah, shout out to Fox. She, uh, is a great graphic designer. Um, mm -hmm. so tell me how to walk through this here. How do I, how do I raid somebody? Uh, so you want to get their actual channel name? Like the one that'll appear in the URL, and then do a slash raid space uh, their channel name. That, that'll be a judo. All right, yeah, uh, Smokey has in the chat. Smokey has the name of the thing in the chat. Um, do you have the raid command available to you? I don't know. Because I know you couldn't change the name of the of the stream title earlier, <laughs> so I'm not hopeful. No, no, no. I I could. I just. Uh, stream elements in me don't get along very well. Okay. So, guys, thank you for coming along for the draw show. We're wrapping it up as Judo Shop figures out how to raid 
uh, a fellow streamer. Everybody, best of luck with the playoffs. Um, it, It's been real. Shout out to all the interviewees. The, the command is slash raid. The command is slash raid, Judo Chop. I don't know if you're able to do this or not. But we're about to find out for science. Oh, you, you can do it! Yo, we raid in Fox. Everybody get in there. Everybody get in there. All right? We're ready? Smokey says, hurry, give us a fun fact you know. Chogo has had 100% win rate in Division 1 this season. That's my fun fact. <laughs> there we go. And Gave him the fun fact. And here we are. As you can see, we have the beautiful Fox and Starla in the back. I can and, see um, it. Yeah, enjoy her stream. She looks like she's doing some overlays and badges and emotes. Wait, can the people still hear us? I don't know. Hello to the people. I don't know either. You should probably end the stream. Yeah, I'm going to end. Stop streaming. Cool.